before creating new rules in Curator, it might be a good idea to go to the uh, App Exchange, and uh, you can go either from going into this uh, link in here or going from the uh, Curator Admin Console, and where you install this extension, which is the Extension Management, and then click on this link to go to the Security App Exchange. But when you go into that exchange, you're going to find a tremendous amount of applications that already provide you rules. As we see this one from Tentre Micro, and they, these, these are constantly updated. Many of them has very sophisticated rules, so you don't have to uh, create rules from scratch. Uh, uh, there are some, some interesting packages. This one has a lot of rules on, on PCI. Uh, uh, on, on reconnaissance, these are actually excellent uh, set of rules already thought of. But you know, you may want to actually create your rule from scratch if you don't find it in here, or you may, or, or it doesn't come with the very many that Curator already comes out of the box. But you may want to actually uh, create a one from scratch or modify one of these to suit specifically the environment that you have. Before I forget, I want to mention that this uh, uh, content has been uh, created by our friend Mutash from, uh, from IBM Poland. Uh, these are things that I recommend you to do better if you do it on, on, a, on a curator test environment rather than doing it on the, on the, uh, on the production one. And when you are in a production environment, or a, uh, sorry, in a test environment, even on a good test environment, you may have a lot of log sources. And this may be, I already have this uh, pause in here, but you may have constantly bombarded of a bunch of events. And it may not be easy for you to see the events that you want. So you most likely will want to start by creating a search that uh, specify what are the things that you actually want to see. So. In here, I'm, I'm creating uh, one that I, I, I want to filter and put only uh, events that come from my uh, email server because those are the ones that I'm going to be developing the rule for. And I actually click here on filter. And uh, if I play this before the last uh, you know, three hours or so, I'm going to see uh, only those events that come from the mail server. And that is a search that you may want to save it. Uh, and have it uh, included in your quick searches. You can specify a name, and then you can always uh, go back uh, and see and get that search uh, for only those events. Next step is going to be most likely to you to get uh, copies of those events. So, uh, one simple thing is the events are just one or two. Uh, you can actually go into the log uh, and look at the payload and actually copy that and you're going to paste it into a file that uh, for further uh, replaying that. So if there are a couple of these that are very similar, then that's not a big deal. But what happens if there are way too many of those? Say that uh, the rule that you want to have fire is not made out of one event. It's a combination of multiple events happening uh, you know, within three minutes, two minutes uh, of, of, of each other. So what you can do is actually go here and have a, where, where all your events are actually being uh, shown and actually have them exported uh, to uh, into uh, XML format. And then you can specify where you actually want to save that file. But that file is is, uh, is in XML format. And what you want to do is you want to have it in a log, standard log or text format uh, to be exported. So I can save this file uh, someplace. For that, there are several ways uh, of actually doing that. There are Python, so you can go in Git, uh, GitHub and get a Python uh, script that uh, convert from XML, XML to logs. We like to use this uh, Perl script that I, I'll put a, a link uh, to a site that you where you can actually download it. Uh, but if you don't get access to the site, you can actually see it's a very it's not too painful to actually get this simple uh, Perl script that is going to convert. It's going to take all that XML formatting, all those brackets and all that stuff, and it's going to put it into a plain log ready for you to play them. Now that you have your logs, the logs that 
have the condition that you want your rule to fire upon and you want to uh, you, you want to test your rule against it, you're going to replay those logs. And for that, there's an utility, unsupported utility. This is not a real thing. Uh, you're replaying uh, some logs that you created before. There's a tool in Curator uh, called Log Run. And I'm going to talk, uh, this is the path where it is in OPT Curator bin. That's a uh, Log Run. Uh, and that script, uh, uh, the first part of it that you specify is is precisely the file where that where you put those uh, logs in, in in text format, and the file can be dot log dot text. It doesn't matter as long as they are in in, in the format in the clean uh, text format that the logs normally come. You have several parameters in here. The next parameter is dash u, which is allows you to spoof the uh, uh, IP address where these logs are being replayed. So if you have them in your log format coming from whatever IP address and you want them to come as if they were from a different uh, 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 IP address, well, you specify that with the dash U. This uh, uh, 10 parameter, uh, you need to specify it, and this is the uh, how fast you want to play these, uh, these, uh, these logs. Uh, in this particular case, we are doing uh, at uh, and 10 megabits per second, you can make 100 megabits per second, whatever, how fast you want them to play. This last statement is just, I want to see the results of it. And that's what you send it uh, to null. And uh, there's one more parameter that you might be interested in using, and that is uh, the minus L. So if I were to put minus L here, oh, sorry, down here, if I want to put the minus L uh, after the, uh, the any one of these parameters. The minus L, it implies a looping. Let's say that I want these uh, logs to be replayed over and over again until I hit Control C on the keyboard. But that's what uh, the, 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 uh, the dash L uh, command will actually do. Once you've done all that and you have your search uh, ready and, and uh, you can uh, start replaying those logs and prepare for uh, debugging your actual um, rule. So if I, if I were to play the script that I, I'll show you before, this is what you'll get. So now you can over and over again uh, play your uh, events until the rule satisfies your request. And here, uh, we, more on this later, we'll see that this uh, rule is actually firing and that's what that uh, red dot in there indicates that it contributed to an offense. Uh, but more on that on the next uh, uh, series of uh, videos on how to debug uh, your your rules. There's another uh, sister video of this one that explains exactly what I just showed you, but how you uh, collect flows, because you can make rules that fire on logs, flows, or both.